know this is about as close as you're going to get Baba Bhakti to the edge without railing. <laughs> but she's sitting here, she's so on edge. We were going to stand back there about 12, 15 foot. And she made her own way here, sat down peacefully. So she's obviously feeling somewhat comfortable. But as you can see, the landscape is pretty far out. Okay. Literally far out. All right, but we're here to read Bhagavatam. So, where are we reading from? Canto 4, Chapter 21, Text 50. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We finally found the spot. There is nobody here. Let's see. Let's see. Right. <coughs> 50. Our dear Lord, it is your occupational duty to rule over the citizens. That is not a very wonderful task for a personality like you, who are so affectionate in seeing to the interests of the citizens because you are full of mercy. That is the greatness of your character. Oh, Pop. A king's duty is to give protection to his citizens and levy taxes from them for his livelihood. <laughs> Since the Vedic society is divided into four classes of men, the Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and Shudras, their means of livelihood are also mentioned in the scriptures. The Brahmanas should live by spreading knowledge and should therefore take contributions from their disciples. Whereas a king should give protection to the citizens for their development to the highest standard of life, and he can therefore levy taxes from them. Businessmen or mercantile men, because they produce foodstuffs for the whole of society, can take a little profit from this, whereas the Shudras, who cannot work as either Brahmanas, Shatras or Vaishyas, should give service to the higher classes of society and be provided by them with a supply of the necessities of life. So what stood up for me was in the verse where it says <clears throat> that it's not unusual for King Prithu to carry out this role of king and leader because his qualification is because you are so affectionate. This word affectionate, first of all, so because we often speak about leaders and managers and it's not easy, first of all, being a leader or a manager in any way. And so the affectionate or personal side can be lost in the focus of, but I've got to get this done, mm. which is also in the interests of people, whoever you're me leading or managing, to great Take care of business. Right. And so <coughs> but it take, it's a special type of leader that can balance the two, that can get things done like Prithu Maharaj is doing, but that he's showing personalism and affectionate affection towards the citizens. And so he has affection and not just affection, but that in seeing to the interests of the citizens. So he's actually thinking, what is it that they need and how can I fulfill that? Hmm. So it's a it's a really interesting, you know, it just stood out for me because, yeah, just to stress, leadership is not easy. We're not trying to put down any form of leadership or management, and it is it is easy to just get into the problem solving or making sure everything is done. Mm. But where people actually become dissatisfied is where they don't feel that um, affection actually. And it's just, oh, yeah, this, yeah, he gets, he, she, yeah. You know, they just have that connection. Recently, one young devotee was speaking to me about some concerns she had. And I said, and she wasn't saying my mentee or anyone that was coming to me in that role, just someone she felt she could talk to. But she has a higher, a, someone above her authority. I said, have you spoken to this person? And she said, no, because they're just corporate. That was her term. And they just want to... They just, they get things done. And she, she acknowledged that. They get things done in the department or wherever she's serving. But she didn't feel that affection or personalism to take shelter otherwise. So when I need stationery or when I need cleaning things or whatever, I, it gets done. But beyond that, it wasn't there. And it's, it's quite a powerful point, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, to be personal, show affection, show care, show concern. Nice. <coughs> Excuse me, next paragraph. The symptoms of a qualified king or political leader is mentioned herein. He must be very merciful and compassionate to the people and see to their prime interest, which is to become elevated devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Great souls are naturally inclined to do good to others, and a Vaishnava especially is the most compassionate and merciful personality in society. Therefore, we offer our respect to a Vaishnava leader as follows. And then this verse again, the same as in the end of the last uh, purport. Vancha kalpa trubyas cha kripa sindu bhyevacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnava bhyo namo namaha only a Vaishnav leader can fulfill all the desires of the people, Vanchakalpa Taru. And he is compassionate because he is very he is the contributor of the greatest benefit to human society. He is a Patita Pavana, the deliverer of all fallen souls, because if the king or the head of the government follows in the footsteps of the Brahmin, Brahmins and Vaishnavas, who are naturally leaders or missionary leaders in missionary work, the Vaishas will also follow in the footsteps of the Vaishnavas and Brahmanas, and the Shudras will give them service. Thus, the entire society becomes a perfect human institution for combined progress to the highest perfection of life. So it just always strikes me, Srila Prabhupada here again is stressing the uh, Varnashram system. And that means that there are different types of people. First and foremost, that's a very important thing because we're all unique. We have our unique qualities. We can't try to be something that we're not or someone that we're not. Um, at the same time, it doesn't really seem um, that we have uh, become so expert at this point in, um, in uh, how to say, yeah, allowing people to be uh, their varna and conduct themselves. So it, it can be a little little difficult. Like I just think about kshatriyas and kings and rulers. And, uh, you know, if someone acts in that way, or even as a vaisha, if someone's like really motivated to make money, the more what you get is people who are, quote unquote, trying to be brahmanas, condemning them and telling them they should act more like this. They should be more detached. But with all due respect, I mean, of course, we should all be be detached ultimately, but we still have to act. So it wasn't that Arjuna wanted to be detached and go to the forest, but he was encouraged to know you being detached is not what you're supposed to do. You're meant to fight. So Vaisha is meant to make money. So no problem. Make money. Make money for Krishna. Be detached in the sense that you give some of that money to Krishna. Kshatriya, rule, rule for Krishna. Uh, protect for Krishna. Still obey the Brahmanas and do it under Brahman. You know, like that. It just, it seems like, again, that social infrastructure uh, still remains to be established and, and set out. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, 52 is the last one, but I'm not sure. Let's see how we go. 51. Mm -hmm. Here we go. It's 51. The citizens continue. Today you have opened our eyes and revealed how to cross to the other side of the ocean of darkness by our past misdeeds and by the arrangement of superior authority. We are entangled in a network of fruitful activities and have lost sight of the destination of life. Thus we have been wandering within the universe. In this verse, the words karma, bir, daiva, sam, samjnita are very significant. Due to the quality of our actions, we come to the association of the most material nature. And by superior arrangements, we are given a chance to enjoy the fruitive results of such activities in different types of bodies. In this way, having lost sight of their destination in life, all living entities are wandering in different species throughout the universe, sometimes getting birth in a lower species and sometimes existence in higher planetary systems. Thus, we are all wandering since time immemorial. It is by the grace of the spiritual master 
and the Supreme Personality of Godhead that we get the clue of devotional life and thus progressive success when our life begins. Here this is admitted by the citizens of King Prithu. In full consciousness they admit the benefit they have derived from the activities of Maharaj Prithu. <laughs> it's interesting when I was reading since time immemorial we've been wondering as well the, it's wandering as well isn't it not wondering yeah it's just my accent okay yes yes <laughs> and also wondering i guess who is life who is god yeah. but i was thinking sitting here because of the history of the grand canyon i mean no one really knows the origins they do speculate and they say like it's billion years old and 500 million years old but it is old that's for sure and it's very majestic and many people have come and gone try to conquer it try to you know go down well people have died people have lost their lives <laughs> i was thinking yet it still remains you know it's like uh it's it's just immobile it's just there immovable and it's like and the living entities come and go as it says here just yeah like we're sitting here now you could do like this, what was that, um, time lapse you did? Yeah. So we could do a time lapse of this very spot over the years. So we'll come into it, a blip. We go, other people, will, you know, generations blip, go. This thing remains and life just keeps going on. And somehow amongst that, Prabhupada is saying that you can get, that the spiritual master and Krishna can give you a clue of devotional life. And you just need that clue and we can get out of that time last blip, you know? Uh, 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 interesting. I don't know if you noticed, but yesterday in that IMAX movie about the Grand Canyon, someone said something about time, which is more or less time immemorial. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I thought, yeah. oh, wow, that's interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so we do have time to, I think, finish this off. So this is text 52, and it's the last verse of this chapter. Dear Lord, you are situated, Lord, with a lowercase l, which means they're referring to the king, Prithu. Dear Lord, you are situated in your pure existential position of goodness. Therefore, you are the perfect representative of the Supreme Lord. You are glorified by your own prowess, and thus you are maintaining the entire world by introducing Brahminical culture and protecting everyone in your line of duty as a Kshatriya. So they're glorifying him because he's, he's, he's a devotee, but he's also doing a service. So it's not like I'm a devotee, I don't have to do anything. It's like I'm a devotee, and I'm, I'm a Kshatriya king, and I have to do my duty properly for Krishna. Purport. Without the spread of Brahminical culture and without proper protection from the government, no social standard can be maintained properly. This is admitted in this verse by the citizens of Maharaj Prithu, who could maintain the material, wonderful situation of his government due to his position and pure goodness. The word vivrida satvaya, satvaya is significant. In the material world, there are three qualities, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance. One has to be raised from the platform of ignorance to the platform of goodness by devotional service. There is no other means for elevating one from the lowest, lowest stage of life to the highest stage but the execution of devotional service, as advised in the previous chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam. One can raise himself from the lowest position, position to the highest simply by associating with devotees and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam regularly from their mouths. We're not necessarily pure devotees, but at least we're repeating the words of the pure devotee. Shrinvatam svakata krishna punya shravana kirtana rajanta stoya bhadrani vidunoti sudit satam. <coughs> when one engages in devotional service in the first stages of hearing and chanting, the Lord, who is in everyone's heart, helps the devotee in cleansing his heart. In the gradual cleansing process, one is relieved of the influence of passion and ignorance. Gradual cleansing process, important point. Passion and ignorance and is situated on the platform of goodness. The result of association with the qualities of passion and ignorance is that one becomes 
lusty and greedy. Lusty and greedy. But when one is elevated to the platform of goodness, he is satisfied in any condition of life and is without lust and greed. This mentality indicates one's situation on the platform of goodness. One has to transcend this goodness and raise himself to pure goodness called vivrita sattva. Or, you okay? Yeah. You just got stuck by a cactus, didn't you? Yeah, I the baby you, cactus. So you fiddling over there. Or the advanced stage of goodness. Sorry. One has to transcend this goodness and raise himself to the pure goodness called vivrita sattva or the advanced stage of goodness. In the advanced stage of goodness, one can become Krishna conscious. Therefore, Maharaj Prithu is addressed here as vivrita sattva, or one who is situated in the transcendental position. But Maharaj Prithu, although situated in the transcendental position of a pure devotee, came down to the position of Brahmana and Kshatriya for the benefit of human society, and thus gave protection to the entire world, <clears throat> by his personal prowess. Although he was a king, a Kshatriya, because he was a Vaishnava, he was also a Brahmana. As a Brahmana, he could give proper instructions to the citizens, and as a Kshatriya, he could rightly give protection to all of them. Thus, the citizens of Maharaj Prithu were protected in all respects by the perfect king. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the fourth canto, 21st chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Instructions by Maharaj Prithu. I just need to uh, highlight this. Let me highlight him. Uh, this last section but is he very is powerful. At home. Yeah. It, it says that, uh, first of all, he was situated in the transcendental position, but he came down to the um, uh, position of a Brahmana and Kshatriya. So it means on the trans super transcendental platform as you know gopi bartu or parakamala your das 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 on das or um uh naham naham brahm naham vipro nachan anyway i can't remember the verse now but anyway so i'm not a vaishna a vaisha i'm not a shudra i'm not a brahman not a kshatriya lord Chaitanya explains i'm simply das and udas and udas so, but he comes down to the platform of Brahman and Kshatriya to perform his duty for the protection and well-being of the other, other of, of those he's looking after. Interesting point, Prabhupada says that he acted as a Brahmana because he was a Vaishnava, and because he was a Vaishnava, automatically he was a Brahmana. But he was a, a Kshatriya, so therefore he acted as a Kshatriya, but also as a Brahmana. As a Brahmana, he could instruct, and as a Kshatriya, he could protect. So this is really, really powerful statement for helping us to try to understand how we ourselves need to act within the social structure, under, trying to understand more and more what is my actual varna and what is my dharma. And uh, I think this is such a vitally important um, uh, point or process for all of us as devotees. Any thoughts? I agree. Well, there you go. That must be something special. Okay, so we'll finish here. So we finished chapter 21. Mm -hmm. We're now about to start chapter 22. Mm -hmm. And there are 26, 27. Oh, there's a lot more than I thought. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. There's 31 chapters in the Bhagavad and fourth canto. Mm -hmm. So we've got about nine more to go. But mm -hmm. very powerful. And uh, we've done this reading here in a holy place of uh, <laughs> Grand, Canyon. Grand Canyon. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being loyal. Thank you for hearing from the Bhagavatam. Um, mm. And uh, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Haribo!